Welcome one and all to another edition of the Default Show with Luby here on the 5 Reasons Sports Network brought to you by the amazing people at Water Cleanup of Florida. Been buying and selling our home and moving into a new home. Believe me, one thing we've looked for is spots all around the home. Leaks or something that aren't the biggest deal, but they can become a big deal. If you get to them early, it'll make your life a lot easier. Water Cleanup of Florida will do that for you. Call them, 954-579-0356 for immediate assistance. With over 60 years of combined experience between Michael, Robert, and their team, they are prepared to take on types of leak, all types of leak detection issues, 24 hours a day, 365 days per year. They'll find the leak, they'll repair it, they'll clean it, they'll dry it, they'll fully restore the damaged areas. Also, with fully licensed, insured, certified contractors, they will make sure it looks brand new. Something not everyone does. Sometimes you have to go to multiple places. Water Cleanup of Florida, one-stop shop. They will take care of anything when it comes to a leak for you. Give. They also handle Broward, Miami, and Palm Beach counties. 954-579-0356. Check out their website, wcufl.com. Socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Water Cleanup FL. And if you don't want to take my word for it, or you trust me, but you're not sure, always good to go to Google, make sure, see what other people have are saying that have also, because I have used Water Cleanup Florida and they did a great job. Google will help you as well with over 75 star reviews. They'll let you know Water Cleanup Florida is the place to go with your water issues. If you have any burgeoning leak issues, Water Cleanup Florida, if you have the schmutz, they have the guts. Miami Dolphins have had lots of schmutz with a three game losing streak. Even after a win, there's still some schmutz. Mike McDaniel has come with rave reviews. The honeymoon is over. He's been questioned a lot in this losing streak and even in a win. Made some really weird, peculiar decisions. Defo and I talked about it today on the Defo Show with Luby here on the Five Reasons Sports Network. I have to say, I, I, I was surprised by this. I mean, at the time that it happened, I, I thought it was kind of a bozo move. I mean, you're screaming. What, what is this guy doing? What was it, like a fourth and three? It was fourth and two. Now, okay, so you guys have to catch me up because I... Knew what was going on in the Dolphins game, but I didn't know play to play until the fourth quarter when they did everything they could to lose the game um, and find a way to win. This fourth and two, where was it? Like, were they close? Because Sanders has sucked lately. And for Mayo, who doesn't watch in uh, but But he hasn't missed from inside He's of uh, 40 50. and in. All of his misses are around okay. of 50. So it was inside 50. Because after 50, he sucks, yeah. but that's true. If it's 47. Oh, very makeable or, field goal. No, okay. they were in a good position here. I don't know. It was like around a 15-yard line. Oh, something really? Like that. Oh, then McDaniels yeah. just got greedy. No, pretty good shape. Uh, I mean, uh, this was uh, what most people would consider to be almost an automatic, a gimme yeah, of yeah. a field goal try. Sure, things can go wrong. But, I mean, when you're up 16-10 to 10, yeah, you go and you're nine. facing a fourth and, uh, you know, I mean, more than a yard, okay. uh, you, you would think, hey, go up 19-10. Yep. That, that makes perfect sense. Now, uh, it doesn't take a genius to do the math there. Even a touchdown and a two-point conversion can't beat you. You, you still have these uh, team by the jugular. Uh, at the time, I mean, early in the ball game, the Dolphins marched down the field on their first three possessions. Touchdown, field goal, field goal. And, uh, you know, it looks like they're going to run away. In fact, early in the game, Mike Tomlin opted to go for a field goal on a fourth down and short situation. And I thought, wow, Tomlin uh, probably should roll the dice here because Pittsburgh looks like they're really struggling in this game. And, uh, you know, I don't know that the field goal is really going to help that much. Uh, at the time, I guess it made it 13-3. to 3. And you thought, well, that's uh, Tony Sperano-type concession. You take the three points, but they're, they're really not going to help you. You're still down 10, and you'd been far better off uh, going ahead and seeing if you could persevere and, and go ahead and get the touchdown. But uh, I, I thought this was uh, very, very poor uh, timing on the decision there by uh, Mike McDaniel. Uh I don't even know if it's justifiable from the thing and the standpoint that, oh, well, geez, you know, you always scream the coaches are too conservative. In this case, that, that was not conservative. That, that was, uh, you know, an essential. And later on, of course, uh, since that turned out to be the final margin was uh, 16-10, uh, Pittsburgh later getting a touchdown. But, but why would you want to leave them in a situation where, as it turned out, they had two shots inside the final five minutes to go and, and score the uh, winning touchdown? And it came very close to doing it. I mean, they drove the ball the first time, and then uh, Pickett, P-I-C-K, got picked off. <laughs> and, and then they're, they're going in for a score, and uh, the game-winning score. And, again, Pickett throws an interception. 
Do uh, does anybody know how to pronounce this guy's name? Ig- uh, Iguodala Ig- or whatever Ig-Benogany. the hell the guy's name is. Igbenagani. 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 I know only because he's so bad that I now know how to say his stupid ass. He wasn't bad last night. He's been better he the last two factor. weeks. The last two weeks have been better. I have to give him that. They, they've needed him desperately, and he's been better. See, I, I don't like to cry after a team wins in the NFL because what we see. No, really, I mean, uh, the differential is so marginal between teams in the National Football League that it, it really is true. If there was ever a cliche that I really didn't care for for the longest period of time, but I now find it to be true, it, it is that uh, a, any win is difficult to come by in the NFL, and as long as you win, that's really what matters. Mm-hmm. So the fans that are screaming today, oh, my God, can you believe this? Well, they won the ball game, the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. They desperately needed to win this game and uh, right the ship from uh, three straight losses. Tua came back, and for the first half of the game, he, he looked terrific. After that, the offense really sputtered. Uh, they got to the point where, uh, you know, you, you're wondering if they're ever going to get another first down <laughs> in the game. Uh, they did everything they could. This was the proverbial hors d'oeuvres on a platter there, the little knishes, where, <laughs> you know, the, as soon as they come out of the kitchen, you grab a bunch. I mean... They, they had uh, every opportunity, uh, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers to come back and win that game, and the Dolphins left them in there. I mean, they were just serving up appetizers the entire time. Their offense was uh, horrible. From, from about, you know, the midway point of the second quarter on, I, I guess Pittsburgh kind of dominated the second quarter. But uh, you, you would have to say, uh, Bozoic, I mean, to go for that on a fourth down, and, and then, you know, McDaniel naturally, you know, he kind of justified it later, saying, well, you know, if you make that play, you're a genius. But uh, yeah. it was a lousy play call, too. I mean, it was a very prohibitive chance of making that fourth down on the play that they called. And 19-10 well, would have been a big differential. And it would have made a big difference for those uh, who, uh, in my case, uh, were getting seven points with the <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> the game's never over uh, when you're playing a point spread. Because there's always the, you know, dastardly possibility of a pick six going against you. And uh, then, you know, you're, you're constantly, you, you talk about, see, all, all degenerates would be geniuses at clock management. Because uh, you're thinking, oh, geez, the Dolphins are up six. Now, Pittsburgh has the ball. If they run a bunch of time off the clock, then uh, they, the Dolphins won't need to press for a score. Uh, they didn't, the Miami Dolphins. And they actually ended up punting the ball from, like, their own, uh, from the Pittsburgh 45-yard line. Yes which was a spread-beating situation. So, uh, uh, again, conservative play calling when you, you know, one first down would have iced the ball game. The game. And, and instead, they ran the ball three times. Uh, Pittsburgh used their timeouts. It put them in a compromising position. But uh, nonetheless, Pittsburgh had every opportunity to take field. that game from the Miami <laughs> Dolphins. Almost all of it predicated on not going for that field goal. Yeah, honestly, if he makes so, a field goal, as a Dolphin fan, I'm not as nervous there. As a gambler, you are, but as a Dolphin fan, I'm not. Like, I was like, oh, I wish I were up by nine right now. And then I found out, oh, yeah, well, he just kicked that field goal. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what field yeah, goal? it wasn't like it was a fourth and inches. I mean, you know, where you're going to run a quarterback sneak, and oh, what are the odds? I mean, uh, one, one, in, one in 15 that it gets stuffed and you don't get the half a yard. I mean, they had to actually run a legitimate play, which, uh, you know, was going to, you know, leave them open to all kinds of possibilities of negativity, including not making it, <laughs> which, yeah. uh, I mean, that, that was a disaster of a decision. I, I'm sorry, Mike McDaniel. You, you can talk about it all you want. Uh, everybody was screaming, hey, what, what is this guy doing? And he didn't go for it, and it nearly cost him the game. And think about how large that victory was versus uh, suffering a defeat last second to Kenny Pickett and the Pittsburgh Steelers who, I, I don't know, is there a win over Tampa Bay uh, a little less, uh, yep. you know, illustrious? Yep. Because yep. yep. of the fact that uh, Tampa Bay got hammered again uh, this week. I mean, uh, they scored three points, I think, in their ball game. Yes. What was the final on the uh, Tampa 21 Bay three. game there? 21-3. 21-3. Yes. Imagine that. Carolina. Pathetic. And Carolina a team that just horrible. traded away all of their players. Yes. Yes. That's thrown in the towel on the season. That just yeah. fired their coach. And Carolina beats Tampa Bay 21-3. Yeah. And, well, I mean, see, see, this is kind of an interesting thing. I, I don't know if Tom Brady worries about this kind of stuff. I mean, he, he dumped Bridget Moynihan, or Monahan, whatever her name is, uh, you know, a, a gorgeous babe that she's we had a child one. with, uh, yeah. seems to be very much in love with. And, you know, f- nice to hear that uh, they're still friends and they're co-parenting in a peaceful and, you know, very, uh, you know, uh, amicable way. But, um, I mean, imagine... Uh, 
you don't want the girl to end up uh, with the upper hand in, in a situation like this, do you? From a mental standpoint, where like she shows up at some place that you frequent a lot and you're there with a first time starter and the date's not going well. And she's there with some billionaire and they're arm and arm <laughs> making out. And it looks like a scene from American Gigolo. <laughs> you, you don't want that, right? No. But Giselle has to be thinking, you asshole, Tom. I told you this team was going to exactly. be no good. You got Arians <laughs> fired. You got Todd Bowles in there who was meh. As a coach before, when he coached the New York Jets, it was nothing special, but well, you excused that away because it's Jets. the Jets, correct? Well, at least Robert Sala, because <laughs> the Jets look very different right now. <laughs> I don't know that beating Denver is no, any no, great distinction. I mean, I'm just saying, like, it's just sitting at 5-2. They're 5-0 five and five and on the road, though, the Jets, five and two. I think. 5-2. <laughs> like, I'll, I take it. <laughs> Either 4-0 or, or I guess they're 4-0 on the road, uh, yeah. the Jets this year. Yeah. And uh, beat the Broncos yesterday, uh, sixteen to nine, five and two, ahead of the Dolphins in the standings, yep. and uh, that, that's a remarkable turnaround for a team that uh, you know you figured was going to be entrenched at the bottom of the standings. There, uh, the Patriots uh, have a chance to go to four and three tonight as they take on the Chicago Bears. They're laying a bunch of points. I think I'm stuck with them also. Oh God! But a Bears the kind of team that's just uh, troubling and makes it close. I don't know that the uh, New England Patriots are, are blowing anybody out, and uh, they have to decide whether they want to put that Frank Zappa guy in there <laughs> or Mac Jones eventually. That's going to be an interesting uh, question for them to answer. So, I, I mean, so many things happen, too. I mean, that, that was one thing. But I, I think everybody's in 1,000% agreement, and this isn't post-race handicapping. Hey, I told you the three was going to run. This isn't any of that. Uh, this is uh, strictly like when it happened at the time, you were like, what? Yeah. The guy's going for this? No, we're thinking it. Me, a huge advocate of going for it. But mm-hmm. and I'm not a big fan of opting for field goals in situations where, geez, uh, put some pressure on the defense, run a play. See, if, if they stop you uh, from making like one or two yards in some situations, you say to yourself, you know what, then we deserve to lose a ball game if we can't make a two-yard play. A whole other general philosophy. But, wow, when you when you have a chance to extend a lead, it wasn't even like it was a seven-point lead. Right? We're talking about a six-point lead where a touchdown eclipses you and you lose the ball game possibly. Yep. And it came very close to uh, being victimized by that circumstance uh, because of Mike McDaniel's, uh, what do you call it, daring or stupidity? Which is it? I think both. I mean, it was a little bit of both. I, I understand wanting – but that's the thing. You're still only up two score. Like, to me, you do it if it's a differential where, okay, a field goal, you're up one score – Touchdown, two scores. Yeah. But a field goal to touchdown, you're up two scores. And the Pittsburgh right. offense has struggled, and your defense has actually played pretty decent. Like, get yourself the two scores. I and Again, and if it's fourth and a half a yard, fourth and two, and it probably was fourth and a long two, you're just overthinking it. Like, so these coaches, we talk about that all the time. These coaches do stuff like that, and it's like, why? Like, what are you doing? An inordinate number of uh, people are uh, going for it now. Now, does this go back to that? A uh, piece about the high school guy that went through it on every punts. fourth down and always did it. What, what, what's next? Everybody's going to onside kick <laughs> uh, on every kickoff. I don't know. They're all going to copy this cat because uh, I mean, but that was with a high school team. I, I don't know. They, didn't he become like a college coach? And I'm not sure that he became a head coach anywhere. But uh, that that guy that started I this know, whole thing. I know he never punted. And, he he never punted ever. It was worth. It was like it was advanced game. analytics he that, only that he went was for using. It fourth down. Always. Yeah, it didn't matter if it was like fourth and twelve. He he always, always. went for it. Uh, th- this was just stupid uh, on, on a part of Mike McDaniel. Uh, you know, you don't have to be a genius to be able to do the math. Uh, even a guy that uh, might be inept at mathematics can figure. Uh, if, if it was a seven-point lead, okay, uh, then the touchdown maybe uh, you know gets you in a tie situation. But to go from six to nine when it was a, a huge elevation in you know your your control of the dynamics of the game. I think it's too much. And uh, you would have to think that that was uh, a, a, you know just it looked like a blatant error at the time. And uh, I, I think everybody that was on that side of the bandwagon was uh, on the right side of it because it nearly caused the Dolphins uh, a critical game. Uh, and, and Mike Mayo can appreciate this because uh, he's all in on the over, eight and a hook. How big would that have been, huh? Oh, Jesus. Where the thinnest of margins determines uh, these ball games. I mean, you don't think the Ravens would like to have a few of their uh, you know, plays back in the second half? They finally got off to Schneid yesterday when? and uh, won a ball game the Baltimore Ravens, but their collapses in the second half have been colossal and, uh, you know, have really compromised their season. Uh, I I don't know that you leave it to that. I I, I wouldn't have been screaming. uh, And and I thought when they they left the offense on the field, they were just going to do, you know, the old uh, trying to get a guy to jump off sides. And then, you know, after that bluff didn't work, you know, maybe uh, call a timeout and, you know, send the kicker out there to go ahead and put him up nine. But 
Uh, it didn't happen that way. Kane's a disgrace, by the way, uh, over the weekend. I didn't see that game. Didn't Eight mean. turnovers. Lose to Duke. You've lost to uh, Middle Tennessee State and now Duke, the well, Dukies. Look, I, and I have no room to talk as Norvell has had these struggles uh, coming into his tenure. But the problem is Norvell didn't get paid a lot. <laughs> Norvell was sort of brought in with the understanding it's going to take this guy time to get it done. No, Cristobal was brought in with... Save it. He was brought in with eighty million dollars. Like, and yeah. then they paid his staff. He's one of the highest paid staffs. Like, when you do that, you can't. You don't get away with it. It's going to take time. The thing Segreto wants us to believe. Well, you can't get it. You can't pay a guy top five money to want to take no. time. It just doesn't work that. Not way. not with the transfer portal also. And then they hit and, the transfer the ability, portal hard. And then the ability to bring players with you. And then you're watching Oregon, who got stuffed in their first game of the season. And has been a juggernaut ever Great. since, including a big win over UCLA, knocking them from the ranks of the unbeaten. And so uh, whoever took over there from uh, Mario Dan Cristobal Lanning was obviously G- Georgia's defensive coordinator. He's, he's a guy that having I Having a field day with the uh, Oregon Ducks. And Cristobal comes here and is doing worse than Manny Diaz did with Manny Diaz's supposed players. Yes. He's totally ruined Van Dyke. I never thought Van Dyke was as good as they wanted him to be, but he's better than this. Like, the guy was an NFL caliber prospect. Now he yeah. should be a bench player. Like, he looks like ass. <laughs> like, I mean. He couldn't even qualify for that rubber Heisman that uh, OJ <laughs> tried to buy back from those uh, memorabilia dealers when he ended up getting sentenced to nine years after he got away with a double murder. An atrocious, I mean, just uh, absolutely heinous and grotesque double murder. Not that any double murder is good, but, I mean, this one was particularly gruesome. Yes. How did he get away with that, man? The bloody glove? What, what the hell was that? Because Mark Furman was a racist? Yes. There, it was a perfect storm of... Uh, racial tensions in a big city that they got a, yeah. a, the perfect jury and stupid lawyers. <laughs> that documentary, uh, and, uh, who was the guy? It was like an ESPN guy. Made, made a documentary. Yeah. That, that, that was yeah. brilliant, yeah. It's great. That whole thing on the OJ case and what it meant and uh, its context in society and what was going on at the time, just absolutely uh, phenomenal. But, uh uh, wow. I mean, uh, it, it, it really is staggering to think uh, what's happening with this uh, hurricane football program. Well, cause, cause that's uh, my problem is I'm fine with people. It's not, look, it's year one. It's going to take fine. But to lose the way they're losing, like even Norvell didn't get. They yes, don't look well coached. They, I mean, they just don't. They're gay. On both sides of the ball, there's no glimmer. The defense looks like shit. Yeah. The offense looks horrendous. Like, you can't get pummeled by. Middle Tennessee State went on to lose like the next four games. <laughs> like, you can't get pummeled. Yes. Duke's better, but Duke shouldn't pummel you. Like, Duke dominated them in that fourth quarter like it shouldn't at home it shouldn't look like and there's no fans like that's a, it's interesting that he's recruiting so far as well as he is because what are you selling like there's yeah. no fans it's worse than it's ever been for um like manny at least got twenty thousand. like you can't tell me there was five thousand in that fucking place of saturday like that was a disaster imagine that yeah only jones a Yankee, man i i don't know uh you know i mean look i i, I agree with billy corbin when he said this it was kind of like uh, you didn't really want to buy it billy corbin the filmmaker Said, uh, I would have to say, a dozen years ago. Yeah, since we've been And, and I think this was already uh, starting to set in as being truth. That uh, it, it's just never going to be like it was here. here. I, I don't think you ever get that back. That trying to get that feeling again, uh, it's not happening. It was a remarkable run. And, and sometimes it, it's once in a lifetime. And, and I don't think the University of Miami is ever going to be in a position. Certainly not in my lifetime, which is short enough. But uh, <laughs> what I have left, but. Uh, even in yours, uh, Luby, I, I don't think they'll ever be in, in that kind of position of uh, prominence and or slash dominance uh, ever again. And, and there's no evidence that they've tried a zillion things, right? They tried the hometown guy. They tried to uh, retain uh, Larry Coker, uh, you know, because uh, he was popular with the players. Yeah, and, and that was the beginning of the end. Uh, they, they brought in the golden boy himself, Al Golden. Uh, Randy Shannon was going to be able to recruit here because he was a hard-nosed guy and he had the contacts with the high school coaches and he was going to reestablish uh, the state of Miami. And all we were in is a state of shock, uh, one week after another. <laughs> with uh, that, That's what they should be pushing, the state of shock, <laughs> as uh, the Hurricanes uh, get decimated by Duke in an eight-turnover uh, disaster. Uh, and now Mike Elko and Rick Stockstill. You imagine, uh, you know, Butch Davis or... Uh, Dennis Erickson, Jimmy, losing to guys like Mike Elko and Rick Stockstill in the same season. Not happening. No, no. So uh, that, that, that was a disaster. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, my, my orange, uh, Syracuse Orange, got Ooh. crushed there in the ah, fourth were, corner by Clemson. Wow, so battle of orange close. teams. They were so freaking close, and then their offense went to the freaking yeah. team. 
And no, it wasn't just because it was Syracuse. I root against Clemson in every yes, ball Clemson. game, much like I do. <laughs> Let me see. Let me give you the teams I root against in every game, whether it's point spread consideration or not, but I want them to lose. Alabama. Yes. Notre Dame. Yes. Ohio State. Uh, Texas A&M. Yeah. Penn State. Uh, and Clemson. Yeah. All I, team, I, I don't have any uh, you know, negativity <laughs> about Georgia, although I don't really care for them that much either because they were boring forever. Yep. Even when they were good under Mark Rick, they were boring, boring, boring. Yeah, so boring. But, uh, you know, they, they haven't developed, uh, you know, a reason to totally despise them except for the fact that they're hillbillies. <laughs> Other than that, <laughs> I don't despise hillbillies. they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Did we explain that thing that uh, McDaniel screwed up? He did. <laughs> He's getting very strange, by the way, Mike McDaniel. I know he was strange. bizarre to begin with, but it's strange. starting to morph into a real strangeness, is it not? He's just always been when strange. When you watch those and post-game press it. conferences, uh, and he is. He's morphing into, uh, you should go back and watch some of those old Truman Capote interviews when he was on. I've like, seen him. There was two different movies you know, made Tom about Tom Snyder him. or yeah, David yeah. Susskind or any of those talk shows that were around at the time. Uh, who was the other guy on uh, PBS now? I don't know why his name escapes me. Uh, oh, Charlie Rose. Oh, good for you. Yeah, you, you could see uh, you could see uh, Truman Capote on the Charlie uh, Rose show there, and uh, you know, long interview and kind of a silhouetted uh, lighting is uh, you know one of those real one-on-one type of situations they created there, and uh, you could you probably could just morph his commentary right into a Mike McDaniel post-game speech. Or, uh, you know, post-game press conference. And, and I think the two would sound very similar. They really would. <laughs> he does a quiet thing. And their delivery. He pauses weird. It's just really weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really weird. Yeah. All right, Brett Tesser, the agent of the stars. His guy was running hard last Mostert. night. Raheem Moster. Thank goodness for yeah. Moster. Yep, yep. Wow, wow. He, he, he looks like an asset. See, you're looking at the Dolphins and you're thinking that Tyree Kill, animal. Jalen Waddell, animal. Uh, you know, they have so much speed. Mostert, uh, really, I mean, is, is rounding into form yep. that I don't even know that anybody anticipated when he was signed that he was going to end up being this tough. No, no. He dropped a, well, I don't know if you could say he dropped a touchdown pass. He gets smacked there by uh, Fitzpatrick uh, as he was coming across the middle of the field. And it was interesting how they're using him in the passing game. However frustrating as it was, the Dolphins did win. They're now 4-3. and three. They did look good in the first quarter. And the defense did play strong throughout the game, especially with a lot of injuries. Front, linebacker, back, defensive backfield has been totally obliterated. Noah Bonaguini, who's been a total disaster as a first-round pick, finally, last week and this week, looked much improved, looked a lot better. Mike McDaniel, I still a guy I like. I still appreciate him as a head coach. I still think he's interesting. Two things, though. You got to take points. Uh, look, there's nothing wrong with it if it's fourth and inches, going for it, fine. Fourth and two. You're up six, playing a struggling offense. Your offense has started to struggle. Put the points on the board. Get the double. Get the two-score lead, then go from there. Second thing, their offense has become totally disastrous in the second halves. And this is every game now. Like They, they start out strong, then it goes away from what works. You have Tyreek Hill. You have Jalen Waddle. Get the ball out of the quarterback's hand quickly. Get it in their hands. Let them make plays. Screens, slants, reverses. Be more creative. Get the ball. And don't have Tua just sitting there break. Like, come on, man. Know what two is good at. Know what these guys. You have the speed for a reason, right? You have all these backs with speed. Get the ball out in their hands. Stop overthinking it. That's the only problem with these coaches is they overthink it. Canes, we talked about it. They're a disaster right now. They're under 500. Uh, and that's the problem with the Canes is it's not, look, it's Crystal Ball's first year. Those that thought 11, 12 wins was dumb. 10 wins probably was dumb. But there's no reason with a quarterback like Van Dyke who had all this national attention, you couldn't think they were going to get eight wins. I guess eight wins is still feasible. Maybe. Um, but the fact that they've not only lost to Middle Tennessee State and Duke. Yeah, Duke's better, but still. It, it's not a juggernaut, Duke. The fact that they've lost to Duke and Middle Tennessee State, the issue to me is how they've lost. They've gotten dominated. Like, Middle Tennessee State, the entire game dominated them. Duke, the entire second half dominated them. Their defense did not look good in the second half of both of those games. And their offense wasn't good in the second half of both of those games. I, it's, I get it. It's year one with Crystal Ball. He's not going anywhere. I mean, you're going to give him his time. But the fact that they just look out of it. Like, I, I look, I, I'm a Florida State fan. We talk about this a lot. Norvell did not get crystal ball money. When you get $8 million a year, which is top, it's top 10 coaching money, and at the time it was top five or six coaching money. When you get put a staff together that is highly paid and highly regarded, expectations are ramped up from day one. This idea of three, four years, 
yeah, coaches should get time to turn things over. But if they're taking you from an Oregon program that was successful and they're paying you all that money, a program that doesn't pay anyone money in UM, there's going to be some expectations from day one. It's going to take time to get his players in there. It's going to take time to get better. That's true. But it's the way they're losing. It's not that they're losing. It's that they're getting annihilated. And I, I don't understand it. And I and the, here's the deal. Crystal Ball's not going anywhere. But the people that are like, well, you got to trust. No, you don't have to trust him. He That was his issue at Oregon was his offenses were not good. They were very eh. And their defenses were strong. But they always lost three, two to four games that they shouldn't have lost. And they're doing that now. And I get it. It's going to take time to get his players in there. So we'll see. He's not going anywhere, but that doesn't mean you have to have confidence in him. I, what, what have they done that gives you confidence? Yeah, they're not his players, fine, but I mean, he with the transfer portal, he brought in plenty of players that were guys he wanted to be on this team. And they are, on defense, look, bleh. offense is not good. Tyler, they've ruined Tyler McDyke. I never thought Tyler McDyke was top 10 quarterback, top uh, Heisman guy. I never thought that right now because he's still young, but he showed lots of potential. Even I would say, look, the guy could be interesting. We'll see. They've ruined him. He looks horrible. He looks horrible. And I get it. Maybe he, Cristobal wants to run a different offense than what Van Dyke excelled in with Rick Lashley last year. Maybe. But again, as a coach, you're supposed to design offenses and schemes around the talent you have, not the talent you want. And I, that was a big knock on Cristobal. Look, Oregon fans were not upset to see him go. Same thing with Josh Gaddis. All the Canes fans, he won the Bros Award. He did. But did he win it, or did Michigan win it, and he was just the offensive coordinator? Because Michigan fans lamented about him all last year, and the minute he left, they were excited. When a fan base loses a coach and they're excited, that's not great. And I get it. He had a big reputation. Canes fans were excited for that hire. But we've seen his offenses are bleh. Like, and Chris Ball is the same way, and I, and I understand you want to run the ball and be tough. Even Saban has realized you got to spread it, spread it and move the ball and open it up. I guess the two, it's 2022. And you're in South Florida. And we're, we're, that's one thing, even to this day, for the last 50, 40 years, South Florida's known for speed. Why would you want to gut it out and run it? Like, this isn't a Nebraska or Wisconsin where you're going to struggle to get talent, where you're going to struggle to get speed. This is where speed lives. Why wouldn't you harness that? So I don't think it's all doom and gloom for the Canes. I don't, I don't, it's not, I'm not assuming Cristobal will be a failure, but I don't think you can assume he will be a success either. It's going to be interesting. The Dolphins... Have, a, have an easier stretch here. The Canes, it's supposed to get tougher for the Canes. So we'll see what both the Miami programs do. If you want to hear from us each and every day, check that out on the Defoe Show with Luby, South Florida Live, or just look up on Google or YouTube, the Defoe Show with Luby. Check us out on South Florida Live. Also check us out with our national podcast, Brandon Lang was classic with his plays last Thursday. The Believe Network, BLEAV.com. Search after hours. And our South Florida content, many days of the week, right here. The Diva Show with the Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. The Diva Show with the Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network.